Cool. Uh, thank you guys all for attending. I'm Terrence. I'm uh, the co-founder of Cartridge and a core contributor to Dojo. And uh, we've been building on-chain games on StarkNet for the past uh, two years or so. Today I'll give you a little bit of a speed run of the history of it, where we are today, and where we're going in the future. But before I get started, let's, let me define what is an on-chain game. So on-chain game, like the name suggests, is a game that is fully on-chain, where the state and the logic is all defined in smart contracts, which allows the game to inherit the properties of the blockchain, things like composability, extensibility, and permissionlessness. This is in contrast to Web 2.5 games, which are mostly focused on just representing asset ownership on chain. And once you put a game fully on chain, it enables some interesting properties for, for these games, and new types of games can start to exist. Things like fully community-owned projects, or permissionlessly extensible, forkable, or composable games, and games that can live forever. So the journey into on-chain games started about two years ago with the, in the introduction of StarkNet Alpha, uh, and along with it, a, a language called Cairo. And Cairo was, on basically all accounts, a terrible language. It was very slow, it was very verbose, it was low level, and it was very hard to, to work with. But it had this one very interesting property, provability. And with that property, the promise of computational scalability on top of Ethereum. And it was this property that, that excited some early uh, members of the ecosystem. One of them, Parama, came early on into the Dope Wars, uh, the Dope Wars DAO and suggested like, he wanted to create a fully on-chain game, which was a recreation of, an, of, a, of a classic game from 1984 called Drug Wars, which is an arbitrage game and well-suited for the blockchain. And he's actually uh, was one of the OGs in the space that wrote a lot of the documentation that most of the people that got involved early on uh, used to learn Cairo. Another was Guilty Goiza, who you may be familiar for, with from the ecosystem. He uh, very early on started doing some interesting physics experience, experiments on chain and doing things like neural network inference. And today, he's built, and since then, has built a bunch of interesting games with the latest one, Shaoxin, which is a really cool demonstration of provable compute and the affordances it provides. And you guys should definitely check it out if you haven't already. And so early on, about, you know, starting two years ago, there was a bunch of teams that despite all the shortcomings of the StarkNet ecosystem, how slow it was, how cumbersome it was uh, to write smart contracts, started building fully on-chain games. There was the Dope Wars team, there was the Realms team, Topology, Influence, and Brick. A lot of them represented here at the conference today. And most of the, the interesting thing is most of these teams started building on Ethereum, but very quickly ran into its limitations. Not only the computational limits of trying to build a game on, on layer one, which obviously can be a very expensive exercise, but also with the programming language and the, the tooling and infrastructure that was more designed for simple DeFi applications. If you ever try to define a very complex application on top of Ethereum, you, you very quickly run into limitations of the language itself, like stack too deep errors or contract size errors. Uh, that introduce a lot of uh, overhead to the development process. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are today and the StarkNet stack for gaming, which has come a tremendous way in the last year or so. Uh, represented around the share again is the, the different components that we can dig into. On the foundation, we have the StarkNet ecosystem itself. As George just mentioned, we had the introduction of Cairo 1, which is a much better language. It's a modern Rust-like high-level abstraction language that enables people to write complex applications very easily, safely, and concisely. And along with it is a very high-performant modern compiler, which has a plug-in system that we've used at Dojo to enable another level of abstraction to build an ECS framework on top of it, which makes it even easier to define the, the logic and, and, and state of games on chain. The next is a transition of the entire ecosystem to StarkNet and Rust. So this has been an ongoing process, initially spearheaded in large part by the Lambda team, uh, but now an eco ecosystem-wide uh, effort that has significantly increased the performance of StarkNet. So you know, early on in StarkNet, you were using StarkNet and Pi, um, and it was a very slow experience trying to do, do anything, basically, and it was definitely not uh, where it needed to be to support games. But today, we're starting in Rust, and the significant performance improvements, you can actually start to run fully on-chain games in production with great user experiences. And with future um, improvements with things like Cairo Native, which will allow compiling Cairo uh, to native bytecode and executing them natively on, on hardware, we'll get even further performance improvements. And the next is Madara. Madara is a, a StarkNet sequencer that enables game-specific rollups that can be 
parameterized and customized specifically to the needs of games. Whereas most layer twos today are parameterized mostly around DeFi requirements, games have a different set of requirements like low latency, high throughput, and, have, and can relax constraints and, and requirements around decentralization. And Madara makes this super easy to do. So Madara allows you to spin up your own layer three roll up or your own, like it could be a layer two or layer whatever, um, and then you can check net, you can, you can settle onto Starknet or Ethereum, and you can have running in the, specifically for your game. And we have a few games running on this today. The next section is the, do, the Dojo section. So the past eight months, we've been building Dojo as, part of the, as a participant in the, the Starknet ecosystem, along with others like Brick and, and, and Realms. And Doja has been a culmination of a lot of our learnings from building games very early on in the StarkNet ecosystem and comes with a lot of toolings that makes it much easier to build games uh, on StarkNet. And so it, I'll it has a few different components to it. One of them is Sozo. And Sozo is a way for, uh, for migrating and deploying your game onto StarkNet. It'll automatically identify all the smart contracts that you have um, and it enables this property of permissionless extension of the world. So when you, ha you define a game, if someone f outside of the core team or outside of the people that deployed the original game want to extend some functionality, introduce new logic, they can easily do that with Sozo and, and deploy it into the game. It helps uh, manage the, the, the contract, insula the installation of the functionality into the world and resolve permission I issues. We have Katana. Katana is a layer three uh, or a gaming specific sequencer. It's a high performance sequencer designed specifically around the requirements um, of on-chain games. And it's, it's very performant. It's focused on being a centralized sequencer and it's very easily moddable and extensible. For, so it's a great place for experimentation in novel sequencer architectures specifically uh, for on-chain games. We have Tori. Tori is a verifiable indexer. It's a, it, it automatically takes comp the components of an of a on-chain world defined in Dojo, exposes them through different APIs like GraphQL and gRPC, and creates reactive bindings to them. So you can use the Dojo client to easily consume the, world, the state of a world and build client, uh, games in your favorite clients like Phaser or Unity or React or whatever you like to build your game front end in. And then finally, we have Cartridge. And so Cartridge, we've been, we found a cartridge about a year and a half ago to focus on uh, enabling this on-chain gaming ecosystem um, in response to our experience in building do uh, Dope Wars Roll Your Own Game very early on and seeing both the promise of fully on-chain games as well as the limitations that face them and bringing them to market. And so Dojo, uh, we're vertically integrating the stack for fully on-chain games, which we think is necessary to provide a great user experience. We have a few different products that we're, build, we're, we're working on developing and offering. On the builder side, uh, uh, we're building managed infrastructure around the Dojo ecosystem, so easy ways for developers to take a game from something they're developing locally to something they're deploying for playtesting, and then something that they're uh, deploying into large-scale deployments. Uh, including things like easily forking a chain, an existing game, adding some additional logic to it, distributing it to your friends to play and test it, and then helping the process of reincorporating that logic into the, the, the main games um, after it's, it's been finalized. We have Explorer. Explorer is a, uh, can be thought of as an on-chain game explorer, a uh, blockchain explorer. So it's super similar to Etherscan, except for it understands the semantics of these worlds, and you can uh, visually explore the, the history of the world and interact with them. It's a tool that I think will be really uh, useful for developers when they're developing the, on, the core on-chain logic so they don't have to necessarily build like a front end for the application before uh, they, to start testing the application. You can do something similar to Etherscan uh, where you can call contract functions directly or you can install different modules and, and components from a generalized interface. And then play, so the play part of the cartridge stack uh, is something that we focused on initially very early on uh, last year with the demonstration of the controller with WebAuthn and, play and starter packs, which was focused on onboarding players to games. We onboarded a bunch of users onto the StarkNet ecosystem for different games like uh, Topologies Moomoo and the Influence team. Um, and the, the goal of play is to provide the, pro the, the interesting properties of the blockchain from the player's perspective, like the ability to have portable uh, uh, profiles and reputations across games, asset ownership, and all these kind of pieces with a very seamless uh, experience without having to extol ex extensions um, and, and, the, and all the other additional overhead that's typically required to get involved in the blockchain ecosystem. So these pieces come together to, to form the StarkNet stack for on-chain gaming. 
Um, and this is where we are today. So today we have multiple games running fully on chain, written with a Doja framework, uh, deployed uh, on layer three sequencers like Madara, hosted by Cartridge. Uh, this is kind of the, the uh, architecture that we're working with today. And in the future, we're working towards enabling even a, a further layer of just like instance specific rollups or client side proved games, where you're just executing things in the context of just the people that are involved in that particular round of a game or the instance of a game, and then settling that onto the lower, the, the, the layer below, and potentially like unlocking worlds in the shared state of the, the global universe. Uh, so what's next? So next is Starknet is a great platform for building on-chain games today. We have a few that we have in de development at uh, Cartridge. We have the original game that we set out to build uh, two, years go two years ago, Roll Your Own, that's in playtesting right now, and we're starting a new round of playtesting in, in a few weeks from now. Um, we have a Drive AI, which is an experiment that we ran with the Giza team and the Starknet Explorations team. It's a fully on-chain 2D physics engine where you train a neural network to basically navigate the car uh, through this uh, road fighter inspired uh, racetrack. And so th this is a, was a really cool demonstration of using Giza's technology, uh, Orion, uh, to define a neural network and then export it and then deploy it on chain and you can use it and, and then you can fully prove, one of the cool things you can do is you can uh, fully prove the execution of your model and then just submit the proof on chain so you don't even have to expose your solution uh, to the problem. but. Uh, you can convince everyone that you have the best model for driving a, a fully on-chain car. And then the latest project that we've been working on in partnership with the Starknet Explorations team is called Tsubasa. It's a, a football-inspired Hearthstone game, fully on-chain, uh, where we're experimenting with the affordances provided by the blockchain for the community to be involved and to basically like set the meta for the game. So defining like what are the abilities of cards, introducing new cards, balance in the game, trying to figure out like what are the different interesting mechanics that are uniquely enabled by the blockchain for the participants that are playing a game to be very involved in that process. And then outside of that, there's a bunch of t interesting teams building uh, in the Starknet ecosystem. These are some of the teams building on top of Dojo. Uh, we have a bunch of new teams showing up all the time. We have a, a game jam happening this weekend that I think will, will be um, a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in building fully on-chain games, uh, the Starknet ecosystem is ready for it, and uh, you should definitely hop into the Dojo Discord and come join us. Thank you. Any questions? For the company, yeah. So my so cartridge is cartridge.gg. Um, I don't think I have it on a slide, unfortunately. But it's just cartridge, cartridge, yeah. Dot gg. Yeah. Just two Gs. Like good game. What's up? Yeah, so, so Sozo is an extension of SCARB. Um, right now, so because uh, Dojo is a plugin on top of Cairo language, it enables like a new abstraction on top of Cairo for defining entity component systems. And SCARB doesn't support uh, pluggable plugins just yet. Like, so you, we, we extended SCARB. Eventually, it'll uh, exist as something you can just configure in, CARB, in SCARB to compile with Dojo, similar to how you can compile with the StarkNet plugin. Thank you. Let's thank Terence again. Thank you, guys.